Abrahamic temples and Mount Sinai, Greek gods and Mount Olympus, Asgard and the Bifrost. Mythological and religious histories are often defined by the power, magic or spiritual energies that separate mankind from the divine. When history can collapse in what appears to be a split second, what can modern archaeological discoveries reveal about our connection with the ancient gods of old? Today, we're going to find out by exploring the fascinating history behind a recently unearthed temple of the Sumerians, one of the oldest civilizations in the world. Along the way, we'll unveil information about the 4,500-year-old temple inside, and the patron Sumerian god Ninjirsu, who is not only the god of thunder and storms, but also of plowing and later war. To get started, we'll drop into the ancient city of Jesu, Iraq, where we'll cover the newly found Lord Palace of the Kings. While much of the archaeological news the past month or so has been about the new Egyptian Pyramid Corridor, there has been another discovery that is lesser known that we'd like to cover, because everyone and their mother is already talking about this corridor. <laughs> In all seriousness though, this is a cool discovery, but it is quite sad that the Sumerian discovery isn't getting as much attention. Traveling to go visit this discovery, we'll travel to the southern province of Dukar. Here we find the remains of what is an absolutely ancient city. Thanks to the use of mud bricks in its construction, some structures are still available for observation. Yet these remains are largely still buried under loads of mineral deposits and sand, which have changed the landscape and the former ancient site, which is now roughly 4,500 years old. One structure emerging from the sand is made of a pair of parallel curved walls that are estimated to be 40 meters in length. Looking from above, the walls form an hourglass shape and could have been the site of a canal with a bridge on top of it. Outlined by mud brick, these remnants hint at a large complex that once held the Sumerian city. Remains like this bridge, the former city gate and the city wall have all but assured those studying the site that there was more to find. Through years of excavation, researchers have unveiled parts of a palace, a public square used for ceremonial purposes, an interior wall that once held a large gate, and an inner sanctum. Digging further, the temple was revealed to have two parts, a small inner sanctuary surrounded by a large courtyard. The inner sanctuary is thought to have been the site of religious ceremonies and rituals, while the courtyard was probably used for social gatherings. The walls of the temple are decorated with intricate carvings depicting both human and animal figures, as well as symbols related to Sumerian religion. Examining this temple closely, we find inscriptions within the complex. One such text designates a king, Gudea, as the one who authorized the construction of the temple and dedicated it as Ininu, meaning White Thunderbird, a home for the statue and figure of the thunder god Ninjisu. This is one of the oldest temples ever found, except for arguably Gobekli Tepe, which maybe we'll cover in another video. Hint, hint. Estimated to be from around 3000 BC and predating dynastic Egypt by over a thousand years, this temple complex is absolutely remarkable, with its architecture showcasing just how advanced and sophisticated the Sumerian civilization truly was. Over a hundred years before the discovery of this temple complex, the city in which was buried beneath it was discovered. This city is known as Jisu. The finding of Jisu took place in the 1870s, when Ernest Shokan de Sazek, the man credited with rediscovering the city, arrived in Iraq as a vice consul on behalf of France. Taking notice of other excavations in the area, he made it his goal to sponsor a dig in Tello, Iraq, after being intrigued at antiquities sold by local merchants. It was in 1877 when the first signs of Jisu were noticed. Ernest would continue his work exploring the area until 1901. He is reported to have recovered a large number of artifacts, including weapons, art, over 30,000 cuneiform tablets, and a 4,000-year-old statue of Gudea, the king who commissioned the construction of the temple, which, by the way, was something that Sazeg never discovered, 
and would leave to be overlooked for over 100 more years. But it was because of Sarsek's discovery of these artifacts that caused people to assume that there was nothing else to learn from this ancient site, hence the reason the temple would remain undiscovered for years to come. It also didn't help that additional conflicts surrounded the region, preventing other researchers from conducting further study. As a result, rumors of illegal excavations and even looting were said to have taken place at this site, making it difficult to preserve the records of the area. It wasn't until 2015, over 100 years later, when a team of archaeologists from the British Museum concocted a plan to see what else was ripe for discovery at this neglected cultural center. In four years, they reached the ceremonial plaza that was used for ritual sacrifices and feasts, finding hundreds of artifacts, such as vessels like cups and bowls that could be dated back to the 3rd millennium BC and linked to the religious ceremonies of the nearby setting. Working in seasons, the team excavated parts of the wall, finding clues along the way that guided the following phases of their work. The resulting excavation, with the usage of remote sensing techniques, drones and other tools, allowed for 3D renderings and other data to be revealed about what the ancient structure looked like, even before it was claimed by nature. This has also given researchers a host of digital and material data to work on in the past eight years. One example of this data and the aid that these methodologies provided to the researchers can be found in the accounts of the statues within the complex that showcased maps of the area. To check for their accuracy in depicting the layout of the walls and structures already discovered by the excavators, members of the research team try to detect a path through the earth to what was said to be the Temple Gate. They were astounded to find just that. Knowing this, they have been able to experiment with unearthing other corridors beyond debris, opening up the future for more possible findings. Along the way, 200 cuneiform tablets were discovered. Other artifacts also revealed more information about the activities in the buried city. Studying these objects as well as studying this newfound temple provides us with vital insights into the religious beliefs and practices of Sumerian society during this period. As previously mentioned, this once bustling Sumerian city was once called Jisu. Putting the pieces together, the city was thought to have been first inhabited during the Ubaid period, which was the pre-Sumerian period between 5300 and 4800 BC. Activity was estimated to take place and really take off around 2500 BC, when the city would eventually grow to become a hub of trade, commerce and culture. As Jisu continued to grow, the establishment of a large palace and temple was pursued by the Sumerian king, who ruled there in the later part of years leading up to 2001 BC. The resulting temple, you know the one we're talking about, in the video. The resulting temple was dedicated to Ninjisu, the son of the chief god Enlil in the Sumerian pantheon. His power encompassed lightning, storms, floods, and rain. As a result of these powers, he was sought after as a god over agriculture. As a provider, he was later seen as one who gave protection to the people, making him a proper patron god of the city, and leading Ninjisu's additional role as god of war to the Sumerians. Knowing this, the temple must have been a significant location to honor the god, incur his protection and abundance for the city and the people who conducted business there. While the ancient Egyptians and Greek are frequent mentions in lessons about ancient cultures, the recent discoveries in this ancient temple showcase the culture and society that the Sumerians were also able to cultivate thousands of years ago, some even before the Greeks and the first Egyptian dynasties. It not only helps us uncover more about the Sumerian culture and way of life, but it also helps us understand the history of our ancient ancestors as a whole. The discovery of this 4,500-year-old temple is also a remarkable monumental find and indication of the importance of preserving ancient heritage, the dedication and skill of the archaeologists who made this incredible discovery. In fact, the archaeologists of this dig who started their work on this project in 2015 were constantly working on and holding out on this site despite the discouragement from fellow academics. Dr. Sebastian Ray, the lead archaeologist of this project, was consistently told he was lying about the finding of the palace, and even that he was wasting money from the Los Angeles-based Getty Museum that was funding the dig. But Sebastian was eventually able to prove all of the losers and haters wrong by proving that the palace did indeed once exist. 
Sebastian and his team hope that through the collections and research they have compiled, they can spread awareness about cultural preservation in different parts of the world. We too would like to carry on this message by bringing you news and articles on these lesser-known historical sites. If you enjoyed today's video and want to see more like it, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Also, please make sure to turn on notifications so you can receive updates on our latest videos, as well as receive updates on our free giveaways of real and ancient authentic coins. Until then, we'll see you next time only on Amateur Archaeology.